Hey, what's up? It's Phoenix, and welcome back to my Philosopher series, where I talk about historical philosophers and intellectual history, and tie it into a larger discussion of the themes of human thought, what that does for me as an individual who is also a philosopher and thinker and intellectual and writer, and what it means for society at large. I'm super stoked because today I'm going to talk about Descartes, René Descartes. I'm super excited. So, as you can see, I have my book by Descartes, The Meditations, and this, I, this was a huge part and influence of this video today. Though it also goes in, in general, this video in general is inspired by René Descartes in general because of what he contributed to Western philosophy and how important that actually is. Now, I have been thinking about René Descartes and Cartesian philosophy for quite a while now, at least since I discovered him maybe uh, 10 years ago or so, where I started to engage with his writings and his mode of inquiry and field of thought. And I would say that he's a very interesting thinker because he definitely is inspired by Peronian philosophy, which we've actually talked about when we talked about Sextus Empiricus, which I encourage you to check out that video as well, which is on, in my philosopher series and which is on my YouTube channel. Because there was this tendency to have skepticism to be so crucial and critical that you doubt everything. That skepticism or a hyper-skepticism is the basis of truth. Because what you realize is that you can't really understand anything. That you have to place doubt on all of it. And I always thought that was interesting because then you ask yourself the question, well, is anything real? And I think it's super fascinating because this is why the Matrix, for instance, was always inspired by some of these philosophical ideas. Is because you ask yourself, well, no, I don't think any of it is real. Is it? And so you ask yourself this and don't really know what to do with it and trying to figure out what is actually real and what actually matters. So skepticism, of course, is to peel away all of the layers, the added layers of deception, of falsehood, of dogma, of confusion, to try to get at the root of it. And Descartes is an interesting thinker because he's at the beginning of the modern era of philosophy where science was starting to be developed, at least science as we know it today. And he's really interesting because he's asking himself these questions of what can you actually know? And he's using his mind to be able to get there. He's using his own understanding and skepticism to get there. Because he understands that it isn't just custom anymore. It's not just what you're told. It's not just religion. Even though, of course, Descartes does argue the cosmological argument to show that God exists. And so it's really a very critical mode of thought to try to figure out what's true and what really matters. And so his project is simple. He doubts everything to see what's left. And this is literally how he derives, I think, therefore I am, cogito ergo sum, because he's able to strip away all of the layers that exist outside of him to be able to come to the conclusion of what is actually real. He asks himself, is there really a world out there? He doubts things that seem obvious. Is there really an external world? And yes, it seems so obvious, but even the external world is mediated by our senses. As they say, we actually perceive the past because of how long it takes light to travel and because of the way that the brain works and the fact that the brain is actually processing things in real time but doesn't interpret it until basically it's the past. So this is actually a really powerful question, to think what is actually real, even though it seems so obvious. And so an example that he uses, that I think is one of the most coherent, clear examples that I've ever seen in skepticism and in philosophy, is, especially when it comes to epistemological questions of what we can actually know and what we can perceive to be real in this kind of metaphysics, which is when you see a stick bent in the water, the stick isn't actually bent. You just see it that way because of the way that light works. And so that's one out of many examples of these, these illusions that we have 
where we think something is real, but it or something is real to us, but it's not because it's mediated by the senses. And so, obviously, the whole powerful idea here is that our senses are misleading. Our senses don't tell us everything that's going on. They only perceive a small chunk or fraction of the world. And that's why what we think is true is not actually true at all. And so because of the time and era in which Descartes was writing, he uses the metaphor of an evil demon trying to trick him. So is an evil demon tricking him? Is an evil demon making it seem like something is real that actually isn't? In this case, the world. Is the demon tricking Descartes and making him think that it's real when it's not? So he has to really go deep within himself, like a true psychologist or a true philosopher, where everything that he's doing is a priori, where it's before experience. Because of course there is a posteriori, which is after experience, and which is the basis of modern empiricism, which is to decide that what is true is what can be verified empirically. But there's also this idea here, which is that it's actually before experience. So he's really trying to figure out what's actually true by thinking about what his mind is telling him, keeping it as away from automatic evidence that you might find in the physical world to be able to look at things in a new way. And so, of course, Descartes acknowledges that there's something out there, but a lot of this is recognizing that we don't perceive things as they are. We are limited in what we actually perceive, and the most important question is that we can doubt what we perceive because there's no reason to think it's true unless we are able to actually look at our principles and go back to the cogito or build on the cogito which is that the way that we understand it is we know that we think we know that we can think and so even though we might not be able to trust our perceptions we can trust our thoughts and I always thought that that was a really powerful argument and I think it's very interesting that that's what he says which is this is a mode of skepticism. We are not going to take dogma or what we have been told to be true because we want to explore it for ourselves. The puzzle then is if we doubt the external world away, well, it's to figure out what's left. And Descartes thinks that he has the answer. His mind, his consciousness, his internal world, as I've been saying, his thoughts. These are the things that remain. These are the things that stay solid. And it's really interesting because this forms the basis of what I would consider to be a very controversial and probably rejected claim of mind-body dualism, where you look at the world around you, you, you feel even your body, which is so physical and real, but then you think about your mind and you ask yourself, well, what are thoughts? What are my thoughts? What are these thoughts? And you recognize for yourself that the mind actually seems separate from our own physical reality. The mind seems to be its, its own thing. And while Descartes is working on his theories to try to understand what is actually going on here, it's actually kind of confusing to try to figure it out because it's not clear. It's not clear why the mind seems so separate. And so he, he comes up with his dualism, his mind-body dualism, in order to try to understand why his mind seems so separate. But the important thing here is that the mind is the skeleton key to the riddles of the universe to knowing what's real. Cogito ergo sum, I think therefore I am. If my mind is all that's here, if my mind is all that I can verify, the only thing that seems real, then what else is real? What else can we know to be real? It doesn't seem like there's really anything at all. Now, of course, um, it is a controversial idea, but I think it's interesting because I think many of us have this intuitive sense of the mind as being separate from everything else in a way. The mind as being its own thing because we can't categorize our thoughts. We can't explain away our thoughts. We can't even question it to a degree because it feels so real and because that's all that we know to be real. And that is what Descartes' project is. It is indeed Descartes' puzzle. He's trying to figure out why his mental experience seems separate from everything else, why his mind seems distinct from his body. And he's asking an epistemological question. How do we know what we know? He's asking, what is truth, and how do we access it? And he's asking questions about human perception, highlighting the power of thought over experience. Descartes is digging deep into himself to see, a true philosopher, utilizing his thoughts as part of his actual study. 
He is a true thinker in that he relies not just on the world around him for evidence, but also his internal world. And so, just so you are aware, you probably heard of the debate between the rationalists and the empiricists. There were the empiricists like John Locke, who believed that there was a basis to experience in the empirical world. But then, of course, you have Descartes, who relies purely on reason, a priori thinking, like I said, to be able to understand it and to be able to understand his thoughts and the world around him and using rationality or reason as a way of understanding what's going on. So why does the mind seem to be its own process? I think that's an interesting question to ask. Does truth come from authority? Or is it also intuitive and internal? Can we access the truth? And it's what Descartes is trying to do. Like I said, by stripping away everything and by seeing what's left. Indeed, there is more to this and more to life than what we see with mere appearances, with what we see on the surface. Now, I like this puzzle. I like Descartes. I like the project of philosophy. And I like it because I like the idea of trying to construct an understanding. You could call this first principles thinking, for instance, where you build on principles, or one principle even, in order to come to truth. And I like it because I want to understand things. And because even though Cartesian thought is rejected a lot by thinkers and intellectuals nowadays, it's an interesting question how we figure out what's true. And Descartes really was ahead of the curve by recognizing these deep truths about our minds and about the way that we think about things. And so I like it because I like trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what my starting point is, to the point to where even other philosophers were influenced by Descartes, such as Husserl who actually utilized Descartes' project to start from scratch in his own philosophy to try to understand his own mind and of phenomenology. And he starts, Descartes does, by doubting because he knows how important that doubt actually is to building an understanding and constructing an understanding. He's trying to figure out what principles are actually true. And so, yes, there are a lot of criticisms to Descartes. So one is the fact that his hyperskepticism seems too extreme. How can we doubt everything? Don't we want to build on things? Don't we want to build on knowledge? Don't we want to build on science? And that's a good point. Because there's different ways of constructing knowledge. There's different ways of understanding things. And I think the reason why Descartes does this is not just to understand the external world, even though this is his scientific and philosophical approach. I think it's actually partly to understand himself. And this is one of the greatest strengths of Descartes' project, I think is trying to ask ourselves, how do we think? What is our mind? What is our mind thinking? What does our mind reveal to us? And I think they're very powerful questions. The way that I see it is, Descartes is ahead of the curve because he's asking these questions of what can his mind tell him? What is really important here to focus on? And what dogma or unquestioned biases and assumptions can we ax from, the, from our understanding in order to try to come to a more concise and philosophical truth. And so, yeah, and so that's there. And I think that it's an amazing project. I think there's a lot of value that can be found in going deep within the mind and kind of psychologizing, you could say, and thinking deeply about your psychology, trying to understand how your mind works. Another thing, of course, that you probably see coming is that his mind-body dualism is definitely criticized. So in a materialist world, in materialist science, we go based off accounts of the body and the brain. We go off accounts based in physics, in biology, in neurobiology. We don't have time for Descartes' ghost, which is what it's been called, where there is, it only seems like our mind is separate, but it really isn't. And I remember getting a lot of, seeing a lot of criticism for Descartes with talking with other individuals that I've met throughout the years, which was that mind-body dualism is trash because it focuses too much on the internal sense of mind and that there is no self. So even Buddhism goes into this too. There's no self. We just imagine the self. So mind-body dualism can't be true because there's only one stuff in the universe, what they call monism. And that's interesting too, because that may be the case. It may be the case that we may have this common sense view of our minds, 
but ultimately we are embedded in the physical world. I don't like that view, but I do understand why people come to that conclusion. So I think there's definitely a lot to consider. There's definitely a lot to think about. What does it mean? What do these questions mean? But for me, throughout the years, I've just always had this deep uh, affinity for Descartes because I feel like so much of it makes me feel like it's important because I want to understand my own mind. It helps me understand my own mind. It helps me understand what's going on in my head. It helps me understand what I'm thinking. And I find the curiosity here and the questioning to be so valuable. And that even if we have to take a common sense scientific view in order to survive, and we can't be hyper skeptical or even skeptical at all, because we have to go off facts and logic and data and information. I think really pausing to reflect, to introspect, to think. They do call this armchair philosophy in some circles where you literally are sitting in an armchair and just thinking. I think it's great. I want to understand my own mind. I want to understand what's going on. And so this is Descartes' puzzle. And I ask the question, can we solve the puzzle? So yeah, I'm Phoenix. I hope that you'll check out the other videos in my Philosopher series. I hope you also check out my other videos on my channel. And I hope that you'll check out my books as well. Hit that like button, subscribe, share. Thank you for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this new episode in my Philosopher series. And yeah, I appreciate you very much. I couldn't do this without you. Thank you for your support. And keep that curiosity. I will see you next time.